Hi, and welcome to Website Critiques. My name is Brian Capricci, and I'm here with Chris Bowman. Chris Bowman, say Chris hi. Chris Bowman, hi. yes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for submitting your websites. We have a, a ton of websites to go through, and we're just kind of going through these one a week. So today we have uh, Raf Nogol's website up here, and we're going to dive into uh, the website critique. So Chris, first impressions, what are your thoughts? It's interesting. I like, okay, I'll tell you what I like. Okay. I like how it's different, yep. right? So you have a navigation down the left-hand side. We see pretty much every website on the planet has a navigation along the top. Well, I mean, it works, so why not do it, right? Um, I like the fact that it's on the left. Um, I like the fact that he's using imagery and it's kind of like this card style. Um, and he's obviously cropped them really well to, to fit like some nice horizontal, um, you know, pretty looking typography. He's using some subtle grays in the nav and stuff instead of it just being black, for example. I think that works. What do you think, Brian? So, yes, um, I think it's interesting to have the nav off to the side. I think it takes advantage of widescreen monitors that so many of us use. I'm actually curious to see how it collapses down as you go down to smaller screens, which it doesn't look like it does. Okay, so that's, but it might be different for mobile. But um, I think it's okay. My only thought, though, is if I go into one of the portfolios, are the images... So, th so that's the challenge is you're actually sacrificing by having the nav on the left, you're sacrificing screen real estate for your image because this image proportionally is pretty much the screen we're looking at. But by having the nav static over here, you basically lose that space to have the image larger. And I'm not sure if that's a concern or not, but just a consideration to, to keep in mind. Yeah, no, that's an interesting Yeah, Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I want to, <laughs> one of the things, this is always a challenge, right? And sort of how... Um, how a photographer markets themselves specifically on their website and and raf's doing something that i see a lot of photographers do where they have one website that that is sort of a catch-all for everything um and initially it appears to me like i can come here and it's like okay wedding photography great so i'm going to go ahead and click wedding photography and i'm taken to the portfolio for wedding photography but that's all i'm taken to there's now pricing mixed into other pricing there's a boat kind of mixed into other aboats. And then there's like, I'm assuming blog would be just all of his blog posts. So th there's never this element of a visitor identifying themselves when they come to the website, which I, which I sort of think is what I would be doing by clicking wedding photography and then only seeing that. And, and like from a, from a marketing perspective and like I want, I would love to hear your thoughts too. Um, that, that would be what I would actually advise photographers and specifically what I'd advise RAF to do is to sort of consider the landing page to your website as just that, a landing page. It's sort of the starting point. It's the diving board. Let people self-identify. So yeah, I mean, let them say, hey, I'm looking for wedding photography. I'm looking for portraits of my family. I'm looking for business headshots. And then once they've identified, get everything else out of the way. Because if you come here and you're like, yeah, I'm interested in headshots, I still see engagements over here. I still see albums. I still see family photos. Like I'm not, I've just told you I'm not interested in that stuff by going into that particular genre of photography. Everything else should kind of go away. Like what, what, what are your kind of quick thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it realistically what a website is for something like a photography business or some sort of small business like this, it is, it's, it's a brochure, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, this is what I offer. You should hire me. Um, and you trying to convince them. So if they're coming here and they're looking specifically for wedding photography, which I mean, they're most likely looking for something specific, right. um, then yeah, tailoring the entire experience around them once they hit that. Um, I've seen photographers have different websites for, for this purpose. They'll have, you know, they might have photography by Ralph Noel, uh, Ralph Nogel, um, weddings and engagements and right. family or whatever. And they have like different domains and everything, mm -hmm. but you could totally pull it off. As you said, Brian, like with one website, you hit wedding photography, everything else kind of drops away. You have the about you in terms of wedding photography. You have pricing for wedding photography, you have yeah. blog posts for wedding photography, and you've tailored that experience, right? Um, the, the problem with what we have now is you have a large navigation. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of sections that aren't pertinent to that person. Um, and there's just a lot for people to go through, right? Yeah. If you watch somebody use a website, if you've ever sat back <laughs> and actually watched someone use a website, it's kind of funny, right? Right. They'll really kind of go, okay, what am I looking for? Right. And, and kind of go through everything slowly yeah. and stuff. And a lot of times they look over things. It's just too much to process. Um, so yeah, really tailoring, tailoring that experience would help for sure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, 
in our on our podcast. If you've listened to our podcast, if not, go go check out our podcast. Um, Rob and I have talked a lot about um, Donald Miller's book, um, Building a Story Brand. I think you've read yes, the book too. Yes, yeah, great uh, book. Right, yeah. Great book. It's and, and, and if you haven't read it, I would encourage you to go back and read it. But one of the things and, and sort of the cornerstone of, of Don's teaching in that concept is that when you're building a message, when you're building a brand, you're building it for the person, like your client. You, and it's it's not about you, the business owner. So, it's, so your website is not about you, the photographer. Your website is about your client. And this style of website where it's like, hey, come here and look at all these things I do. And it's all kind of intermixed and it's more about the photographer and more about their portfolio. That's like the anti story brand type of approach. Whereas if you can say, hey, identify yourself, Mr. Visitor, Mrs. Visitor. Um, and then I'm now gonna tailor everything you read, everything you see from this point forward so that it's more customized and specialized for you and what you've just told me you're interested in. It kind of makes, makes the viewer, the visitor to your website, the hero of your website, as opposed to it being about you and your photography and your awards and the things that you've done. So it's just kind of a different way to look at things. That would be probably the first suggestion that I would throw out to Raf and, and to everyone watching is to sort of really consider the, the, the sort of navigation and, the, and the, the structure of your website. I mean, I would imagine if you were to look at a site map of Raf's website, it would be pretty complex. And that would, at first glance, give you an idea of how confusing the site might feel to a visitor because it is, right. it is so, it's like a spider web, right? Yeah. As opposed to, as, as opposed to giving people like, you know, four main tree trunks and then having some branches off of each one of those that might be a bit more easy to follow and understand and to, right. and to browse. Right. Yeah. So almost like, so if you, if this was story branded yep. um, and you landed on this website, yep. what do you, what, what would you expect if you clicked on one of these four branches? Yeah. So when I, when I click this, I, I would almost want the nav off to the side to be completely gone. I would want basically the website to, to, to greet the visitor to be like, Hey, welcome. Who are you? Or, you know, however you want to say that I'm a bride looking for wedding photography. I'm a family looking for portraits. I'm a, I'm a business looking for headshots. Like, three big, giant, beautiful pictures that let them self-identify. When you click it, basically then you go into like almost a sub-site or even you could literally have this exact same website, but the navigation changes where it's mm -hmm. like, okay, so you're in photography, photo photography, no goal. Oh, Raf, no goal photography. I get it. It's a play. Okay. Uh, right? So it'd be like, photo you know, Raf, no goal photography, weddings. And then there's the, the navigation for weddings there. And then if you were to go back and then click on headshot, it would be, you know, Raf Nogle Photography headshots. And you'd be able to kind of go that way and have like your sub-sites underneath that umbrella landing page. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. Because one of the other things is we've been making this point week after week is the whole call to action, right? And having that primary goal. Right now, there's there's four different kind of segments that, that Ralph is leading people to, which is good. Yep. But then at the same time, uh, sorry, I said Ralph, it's Raph. Raph. Uh, but at the, the same time, uh, his navigation is just overbearing. There's too much going on. So if we could say all of a sudden go to wedding photography, kind of get that person into the right branch, yep. you could then um, have the correct call to action that's very, very clear. You can have a story. You can have it all that kind of stuff. Um, really quickly, have you ever done Donald's like three minute or the five minute um, mm, marketing yeah. makeover, those yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. you yeah. go to his website. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. really useful. If you want to kind of get into the story brand idea, he's got three videos that are, uh, they're actually closer to eight minutes, but he calls it the five minute marketing makeover. <laughs> right. And it's really, really great. So just yeah. a quick shout out for that. So. Yeah. We'll link it in the, in the video here. Um, we're going to continue this critique in the next episode. So hang tight and we're going to get into some of the content on Raph's website and give you some feedback on that.